Here we go. Okay, so the key thing here about the second half is we're really just going to look at the electron movement through that electron transport chain as well as the oxidative phosphorylation uh, because that'll start to answer where those CO2s, that extra oxygen kind of comes from. So uh, every time electrons are transferred to more electronegative molecules throughout that ETC, that electron transport chain, they have stronger and stronger electrochemical or, uh, bonds, right? So the formation of stronger bonds releases that free energy for use later, okay? Those proton pumps are going to help create that free energy. Oxygen is highly electronegative, which keeps the chain moving in one direction, which we had talked about earlier. That O2 is that final electron acceptor. So this transfer of electrons throughout the chain occurs almost instantaneously. It's very quick, it's very fast. So again, as we alluded to with regards to that electron transport train, those stronger bonds are formed with more electronegative complexes. That free energy is released and that free energy can do work to pump that proton out of that cytosol so, or into the, the electro or the mitochondrial complex or mitochondrial matrix. Ooh, there we go. So as they move down that, as they move down that charge, it, that electronegative, yeah, the electron bonds with the complex protein, correct. And then it, it gets transferred and shuttled off to something even more electronegative until it reaches that final oxygen. And in order to do that, uh, it needs to be shuttled. So this is the electron transport chain is just the movement of electrons from complex one to complex and complex two to complex three, complex four, and finally that oxygen molecule at the end, because then we're starting to produce that water. Okay, now we're looking at oxidative phosphorylation, the final step, final step of aerobic respiration, which will hopefully answer some of the questions that people have been asking with regards to where these hydrogen ions are coming from, where's this water molecule coming from. So recall, phosphorylation involves the transfer of a phosphate group to another molecule. That phosphate group needs to be attached to ADP. So that phosphate group, that PI, gets attached to ADP. So far in the process of glycolysis, pyruvate oxidation, citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain, we have only looked at substrate level phosphorylation. That's the only thing that has been used to produce that net 4 ATP. Recall at the beginning of this unit, or at the beginning of the day, sorry, I looked at the overview of, of aerobic respiration and I said, okay, there's two types of phosphorylations. We're looking at that low uh, substrate level phosphorylation as well as that oxidative phosphorylation. Now, as we get to the oxidative phosphorylation, we really start to skyrocket in terms of ATP production. So the free energy released is used to pump hydrogen ions across that inner membrane from the matrix into that intermembrane space. It's active transport because we're moving things from low to high concentration. Those hydrogen ions that are pumped uh, through those complexes one, three, and four, we're looking at creating that electrochemical gradient, right? Again, I alluded to that stuff earlier. And once we create that electrochemical gradient, we can now take a look at how we can utilize that to produce more ATP. So the result is more hydrogen ions in that intermembrane space than in the matrix resulting in that chemical, electrochemical charge and proton gradient. This concentration and charge are different on either side of that membrane. This is going to allow for that huge high concentration outside, right, outside that matrix, which we can now utilize to produce ATP via oxidative phosphorylation. So now we're looking at creating that ATP. How does that happen? ATP synthase, that's the big fella. It's mobile, it's going to be uh, consistently moving along that um, phospholipid bilayer of that mitochondrial matrix, and it's going to help facilitate that reaction. So these hydrogen ions in the intermembrane space are transported through ATP synthase to enter that matrix. They release free energy again as ions move through that, char that, that charge is harnessed to create that free energy needed for ATP synthesis. Again, this is an example of that secondary active. It's used to pump those. We use energy to pump that 
hydrogen ion out using that electron transport chain. And now they're going to re-enter passively. As they move into the matrix, it's going to release that free energy due to that hydrogen ion moving with an electrochemical gradient. ATP synthase will then use to generate ATP from ADP and PI, that the phosphate group, via oxidative phosphorylation. And so now to come back to those questions that you had about oxidative or about where those oxygen come from, oxidative phosphorylation, you guessed it. What's it going to produce? Oxygen. So let's take a look. Oh, and in the final, um, with regards to how all of this works, the electron transport chain produces 34 additional ATP. Now, as some people had alluded to earlier, it doesn't always work perfectly that way, but that's what we're looking at it in terms of theoretical. So this ATP synthase has what's called a rotor embedded in it, okay? And that rotor uh, that's embedded in that membrane, it will turn each time a hydrogen ion enters because of its polar charge and that ion comes in, it's positively charged, that difference in charge is gonna chemic or physically move. It physically spins that protein quite quickly. And every time that hydrogen ion enters, it's spinning that, uh, it's spinning that protein. As it spins and as the hydrogen ion comes back in, that free energy is then utilized to catalyze an oxidative phosphorylation reaction between ADP and that phosphate group Oxygen is formed as a result. That oxygen then gets reused and utilized in the production of CO2 within the Krebs cycle, as well as other places. So it's not just the oxygen that's being used from glucose or the oxygen that's being breathed in. It's all throughout that balanced chemical equation that that oxygen is utilized. Okay, folks, we did it. We managed to go through all of aerobic respiration in, I would say, in, in about pretty good detail. Uh, so I'll end the lesson here, and we will stop recording now, and I can answer questions. Okay, folks, if you're watching this later, have a great weekend. Uh, if those of you who wish to leave now because you're like, I'm done with this, uh, I understand, but please make use of your time.